Hi everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and we are, I don't know if we're live or not, because I'm getting real weird signals. Welcome back to another CYT, CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison <laughs> and we are, I don't know if we're live. We are live. <laughs> okay, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison. Got phew, loads to talk about. Well, oh, it's just... What crazy times we're living in just now. This is just really, really weird. Looking out my kind of window, um, we stay kind of close to a very, very busy street in Glasgow um, near Byers Road, and it is virtually empty just now. On a Monday morning at this time, even at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, it's just virtually empty. It's, it's weird. It's eerie. Very, very scary. Uh, not scary, um, but it's just very, very eerie uh, is what it is. And it's just strange times we're living in just now. I was watching the news this morning as well, which I, I hate watching the news, never watched it for years, but just talking about the coronavirus and the measures that are going to be put in place. But what scares me the most is not the coronavirus. What scares me the most is the measures that they're kind of trying to put through Parliament. I'll be doing this in the USA and Australia and Canada and all around the world as well. What they're trying to put through the government as laws to give them kind of more power to give the police more power, to stop people from travelling. Um, I know a lot of people saying I can understand that. It's just, that's what scares me the most. That is um, kind of really scary, the powers that they're going to give the government to effectively keep us under kind of mass house arrest. When I don't understand it, we should be protecting the vulnerable people. Just now, in my opinion, we should be protecting the vulnerable people. But to have lockdown for every single age group in the world just now, around the world it just baffles me beyond it's just beyond belief what's going on just now but that's my opinions and i know this is a crypto channel shouldn't really be talking about it here but it's scary as shit just now um coronavirus doesn't scare me as i said if we're going to get it we're going to get mild symptoms unless we're vulnerable unless they kind of respiratory systems if you've got copd or something like that um kind of people with kind of previous illnesses with cancer and stuff like that and elderly totally get that you have to put them kind of in isolation and do the kind of self-isolation thing but not for the rest of the population what what the hell is going on um and i know i'm not a medical advisor or anything i'm not a medical student i'm not medical anything at all but uh, it just scares me kind of what's going on just now really really weird shit just now david ike is starting to sound kind of sensible um now <clears throat> but as for another time what's going to happen with the crypto markets and um, that is kind of a big story as well. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to see if anybody's in just now. Right, we have Berserker is in the house. Welcome to you. Good to see you here. And says no name has got there, but um, says Berserker is in. Love the channel. Thank you very much, Berserker. And thanks for all your support um, as well. Really appreciate it with Constellation. Um, Dag. Gino Dow is in the house as well. We're in the same boat in Australia, all borders shut. I heard that as well. Somebody else was telling me all the borders were shut. It is mental. It really is um, kind of mental just now. I don't know if anybody else is on one wee second. I don't know if anybody... Yeah, there's a couple of people in it. It's um, kind of strange, probably because I've not been going live. Um, for a while. And um, got Yogesh Sharma is in as well. Okay, let's look at the markets then. We'll just jump over to the markets and see what is going on in the markets just now. We'll just refresh this. So where are we just now? We've got market capitalization overall of $163 billion at the minute. We've got Bitcoin dominance up to 64.9%. I would imagine a lot of people are going to get out of the alts. Um, I've said before, I'm out of the alts just now. There's about six altcoins that I'm looking to buy back in, and I'll show you these um, as well. But I don't know how long that's going to be. This could be very prolonged. This could go on for a while. Um, all this kind of panic and stuff like that as well, I think. With the media, everything that's going on, we have to ask the question, who's going to be buying a lot of the alts just now as well? If this continues because we're almost starting to see the effects of the financial um, kind of system um, kind of going down just now. We know the government are pumping in money and um, they're giving money right, left and centre supposedly to everybody that's out at work. There's loads of people, um, even kind of in my circle, there's a lot of people lost their jobs because of this 
and um, the coronavirus as well. So the economic impact, not right now, not this week, but next week, the week after, the week after that, the economic impact is going to be absolutely huge. So the question is, who's going to want to buy altcoins? Certainly not retail. We're in the market just now. We kind of know it and we see the prices going down and we're going, oh, these are such a bargain just now. But think about it for the longer term. Who's going to want to buy the kind of altcoins when they need money just to survive? And I'm talking about just for buying the kind of food, for paying a mortgage and stuff like that. Nobody's really going to look at the markets just now unless there's a big kind of turnaround. So what I'm doing just now, I'm just trading at the minute. There's good opportunities to trade. I'm going to show you that as well. We're going to be talking about the ETH Bear, ETH Bull. I've done a video on it yesterday. But I didn't mention about kind of liquidation and how the short term um, of trading as well. It's just really purely for short term trading. It's not for longer term holding it. Although the ETH Bears and the ETH Bulls and the kind of BTC Bears and Bulls, they are ERC20 tokens. So you can take them off Binance and put them in your wallet and just store them. You can do that as well. But it's really not for long term trading, it's for short term trading. And that's what I'm using it for literally day trading and um, trying to build up a pot of USDT. So we'll look at that as well. But first, who's the winners and losers? We have Molecular Future. Um, Leo is, well, it's a stable coin. V Systems, True USD um, stable coins. Everybody's down apart from Molecular Future. Hedera Hashgraph is down big time as well, 16.8%. Um, Wax, Blogstack, Decred, Chainlink, everything is down just now. Uh, we've seen Chainlink last a couple of weeks ago, 1.6 billion market cap, now down to 685 million. Obviously, with the Bitcoin price going down um, as well, that's had a huge impact on that. Um, and we've seen there's no kind of real winners at the moment. Okay, so on to the charts. We'll look at Ethereum first of all. Ethereum has broken structure just now on the four hourly chart. So we can see there was a support line for Ethereum. It's now broken that um, as well. So it looks as if it's going to go down um, at the minute just now as well. So Ethereum's broken um, structure. So we can expect that to go down. This is why I'm kind of trading the Ethereum bull and bear, um, which we'll talk about in a second as well. So the markets have totally changed. Everything has changed. The way we do TA, the way we do kind of everything, the way we look at long-term structure. This is a black swan event that might last for months and months. So we cannot, we can no longer trade the markets like we used to. Um, with the previous supports and stuff like that as well, we can only short-term trade the markets at best. That's all we can do just now. We can only short-term trade the markets. I don't think at this point, we should be stocking up on the likes of Ethereum, Bitcoin, and things like that as well. It's not to be alarmist. It's not to be kind of defeatist. It's just being looking at the markets, looking at the overall um, kind of situation around the world and asking the question, are you going to put money into kind of a cryptocurrency or are you going to pay your mortgage and kind of pay for food and stuff like that? Although that sounds ridiculous just now, it's going to get to that stage for a lot of people whereby they're just not going to have the money. And a lot of people are going to start withdrawing and selling off Bitcoin and Ethereum and the kind of alts as well in order to take money out um, as well. We have to think about this. We seriously have to think about this. So there could be a big, big drop coming for Bitcoin, for Ethereum and for the other alts um, as well. We really have to think about it. And as I said, I'm not being alarmist, but we have to look at this. However, however, there is a way to still make money on this. If you want to trade it, or a lot of people, for most people, I would say just stay out of the markets just now. Wait until the dust totally settles. Stay out of the market and just wait and see what happens with this. Because um, it could be that the crypto markets are going to be the only markets that are trading. Um, so I think the futures markets have been halted uh, in the US. And we'll look at that in a second, what's happening with the stock markets as well. But it could be within a couple of weeks, the markets around the world, the stock markets around the world will not be trading. And crypto might be the only game in town. So it could be you've got an argument for the other case where Bitcoin could go up because it's the only market in town that's trading. It's going to be open 24-7. So there's an argument there as well to say that um, Bitcoin could go up and there's going to be more interest in Bitcoin as well. Um, I don't think with the 
kind of draconian measures that are being put in place by the governments around the world, I don't think everybody's going to turn to Bitcoin for this. Although this is what it was created for something like this happening. Um, it really was created for something like this. Uh, now is not the time. I don't think now is the time for that to happen. And we shouldn't be um, kind of seeing it as, I don't think we should be seeing it as such. I just don't see how Bitcoin, Ethereum and the likes can recover from this. But can we still make money? Yes, we can go short. We can go short on this. And there's always been shorters. It's not taking advantage of a situation with just traders. You have to see yourself as a trader just now and really look at yourself as a trader. So it looks like Ethereum has broken structure just now. It's broken that support line on the four hourly. Um, and we've kind of come down. 70 EMA has crossed down over the 21 EMA. We'll just look out on the daily as well, see what's happening there. And this is a daily, so it's broken that kind of structure as well. We're looking at almost, yeah, no, it's kind of broken that on the, the daily as well. So it kind of broke down at really $217 on the daily. Um, so that was a kind of sure sign that was coming as well. We're just going to make sure that's on the 7 and that's on the 50 actually, so it should be the 21. Now, I'm trading the 21 EMA and the um, 7 EMA because of the volatility in the markets. Again, we have to change our strategy when we're trading um, according to what's happening. And this, as I said, is Black Swan event. So we have to go on much shorter time frames um, when we're looking for the crossovers. A lot of people say the cro crossovers don't work. They do work. Um, it's just a simple trading strategy. And I believe that's all we need. We can look at the MACDs. We can look at the RSI, stochastic RSIs and volume and things like that as well. But um, we can still use the crossovers um, for a simple trading strategy. And Bitcoin, look at Bitcoin just now. I was waiting on this falling down. So this has broken structure as well. We had long-term support there, not long-term. We had kind of, for the last 10 days or something, we had a kind of strong support there and it was bouncing off that and going up again. But now it's broken that structure. It's came out of this trading channel as well. I broke the $6,000 and I was waiting on that happening and I've gone short, not on Bitcoin, I've gone short on Ethereum, whatever happens with Bitcoin, Ethereum is going to fall as well and we've seen that um, just now. So we're at $5,794 at the minute for Bitcoin. Can I see this going down or can I see it going down? Yes, um, there's no question that I can see this going down. Okay, so there's a couple of scenarios with Bitcoin as well. <clears throat> Whose best interest is it to keep this going? Obviously the whales. The whales are going to try and manipulate this to to hell and this is why it's not going to be your normal kind of trading conditions. Um, the institutional investors in there will be out. They cannot take this much, this much risk um, cause, because they really play the risk management game. Institutional investors are not going to be in here. Um, so... We have to kind of look at that and think, well, who is in the game just now? Who's really holding the cards just now? And it's the whales. The people that have collected kind of Bitcoin over the years from the very beginning, and it's the whales that are going to be playing the game. So it's going to be extremely volatile. We're going to get big dips and we're going to get big peaks um, as well. So we have to be very, very mindful of that. Um, so if you want to trade Bitcoin, you can still trade it, obviously, but you have to be very mindful of who's really in control here. Just now, so I don't think it's going to be the institution. I don't think people, are, uh, the institutional investors, are going to say, "Oh, this is a brilliant place for Bitcoin," um, because of what's happening around the world. So we we'll have to be really, really careful of that. I'm just going to jump to the chat. I'm just very wary that I'm going on just now. Steve, just a thought: BTC could have a flash crash, five hundred dollars if everyone pulled out. It could. It really could. And second. Right. Just let me know in the chat area if you're watching just now, just um, kind of put a message in the chat area just now. Um, just making sure this is working okay. It seems to be. It seems to be working okay. Just put a message in, just say where you're from in the world or just say hi um, in the chat area just now. Just making sure this is working. Why is there a message coming up? Right, weird. Anyway, I'll continue. Yeah, it just sees as an error. Yeah, 
Yeah, it just says there's a nether. It's still coming up, but just kind of weird stuff going on just now. Anyway, that's my kind of thoughts. Who's controlling the Bitcoin market just now? It has to be the wheels. Um, and even some of the wheels are going to be going, Phew, time to get out of here. So I think we could see a big drop down. We're going to see the flash crashes um, as well. So if we could go down to that kind of 4,000. As I said, T is kind of out the window just now. And it's, it's not to be alarmist. But we have to look at the bigger picture and see kind of what's going on. But on the daily, I'm just going to look at the kind of weekly. A lot of people are talking about the weekly 200 uh, AMA just now. And we're on the 200 AMA there. And we're above the, the weekly 200 AMA just now. But I'm suspecting this is going to fall below um, the weekly 200 AMA. And we can see this candle here. We've got a green candle here, but look at the wicks on either side. That shows us there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, in the Bitcoin market just now. And I suspect we're coming down um, to at least 5,400, probably test that. We might have a, a few bounces. Longer term, with what's going on, I can see the 3,200. Uh, and even coming down to $1,600, and we might get, as Gino says, we might get some flash crashes as well. But this is not all doom and gloom. As I said, you can still trade these markets and make money. Uh, I just wouldn't be kind of looking at this as a long-term investment just now. Um, and it might be crazy to say say this in the future. You might think back and go, God, Bitcoin was at $5,800. We could have all got it then and just got one or something like that. But just in not, not these times, it's not that time to kind of even be looking at it at the moment, in my opinion. Okay, this is, I'm just going to look at Bitcoin from the um, four chart kind of point of view. And see, look at the MACD and look at the RSI, etc. So we've got the 7 EMA and the 21 EMA. Obviously, we've crossed down over that on the four hourly. I'm putting this on all of these on the four hourly. Normally, it would be on the daily, but um, because everything's moving so quickly, I'm going to put it on the four hourly. RSI is low, that's good for Bitcoin, but it could go lower, much lower than that. We've got the crossover on the MACD um, happening. That's happened already. That happened a couple of days ago, the crossover. And the volume, you can see the volume is, is there. We've got some volume on the four hourly. I'm just going to change the volume to the daily. So the volume picked up on the from the 11th of March, a lot of volume, kind of buying volume as well. But over the last couple of days, we see the selling volume has really come into play. And that's what's happening just now. We're seeing a sell off at the minute. Okay, let's look at the stock markets just now. What's happening around the world just now in the stock markets. So FTSE 100 down 171. Wall Street, they're saying, is going to open up minus 627. I suspect it's going to be higher than that. Germany, 243. Bitcoin down 152. This is all we're hearing as well. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. Just the police siren is going off. Or the ambulance and the police and the fire siren is going off as well. That's not usual for Glasgow. Well, where I stay. Um, crude oil is down to $22.70 just now as well. Somebody was talking last week that they were going to try and buy it at $17 or something. Might well get to that price. Okay, so how do we make money? I've been talking about ETH Bear and ETH Bull, uh, ETH Bull as well. You can do this with um, XRP. You can do it with Bitcoin. You can do it with EOS. Uh, I'm just going to check just now. I'm going to just go Bull. So you've got BNB as well. BNB, I think, is going to be a winner out of this, but at the moment, uh, it's not just now. Uh, that's a Binance token. So just see where Binance is, incidentally. BNB. Ah, it's not doing too badly, actually, in Satoshi value-wise. So it's holding up better than I thought in Satoshi. I've been looking at USDT. So $189,000 at the minute. So that's $10.92. Suspect it could go lower. However, Binance is going to be a winner here. 
Um, if you think about it, so it could be a brilliant buy. This could be a brilliant time to buy the Binance token. However, obviously with regulations, um, I don't think that's, that's going to be second. Um, I don't. I don't think a lot of kind of ministers and stuff like that will be looking at this uh, as a priority now. So we'll have to think about that as well. But Binance short term could go um, up big time. But there still may, may, may be some downside to this as well. So what we're looking at is ETH bear and ETH bull. Um, so we're going to go bear just now. I'm a kind of ETH bear at the minute. And this, I have to say, this is a short term trading tool. Just now it's short term. You don't want to be in this long term. It's an ERC20 token. You can take it off the Binance and put it into your own wallet. It is an ERC20 token. But really, this is for short term. Um, and I'm using this for day trading, literally day trading. You can trade it on the five minute, the 15 minute, and look at the four hour for confirmation in some cases as well. So I'll show you what's kind of going on here just now. So in the 15 minute, I'm looking at the 7 EMA crossing over the 21 EMA to start trading it. So if you get it, say 18.10, actually gone about round about that price again this morning. Um, 18.10, because it crossed down yesterday. Uh, crossed down, well, it was this morning. It crossed down here at 18.95. And this morning when it got up, it's back up, crossing over. So you can trade it on the 50 minute. You can get in in the 50 minute and out in the five minute or in in the 50 minute, out on the 50 minute as well. It's entirely up to yourself. But because it's so quickly moving, uh, you might want to get in in the 50 minute and out on the five minute chart. So what does it say in the five minute chart? So in the five minute chart, you could have gone at 1804 and still been in, in it just now. So another way you can do it, as I said, you can get in on the five minute and out on the five minute as well. And you would have been up as peak about 11% just now. So 11% and kind of on any trade is really good. It's really good. A lot of people would be happy with 11% per year, but 11% per trade, that could be really good. It's going down just now, 1956 um, on the five minute. Watching the five minute kind of spooks you a wee bit because you see the kind of big red candles go, oh shit, time to get out. Um, so that's why it's good watching it on the 15 minute and um, looking on the hourly and the four hourly to see what's happening on the macro level. So if we look at the macro level and just go hourly, that's not macro level, but look at the hourly and the four hourly. So hourly crossed over at 1592. Um, so you could have gone earlier there. Uh, and there'd be less crossovers, it'd be less stressful if you kind of um, traded on the hourly as well. And same with the four hourly. On a four hour late, you could have got in at 16.55 and just been still in the trade. So when you look at the four hour late, you can see everything is still looking okay. It's still going to go up for the ETH bear. Uh, it still looks as if it's going to go up. It doesn't look that dangerous. There's no red candles there. So when you're looking at the five minute, it kind of spooks you a wee bit. So this is why you have to look at the macro level as well. Just out of interest, just look on the daily as well. So on the daily, it tells you something different. Um, because there's a crossover on the daily to the downside. Um, but we've got a green candle there. We're looking to form a green candle on the daily here as well. So we'll see what happens um, today. If it does go above, uh, I would say just over $20. I'll we'll have another green candle. So that looks as if it could um, about turn and go back up again. So this is Ethereum itself. And you can use all these charts on Binance as well. Ethereum itself kind of broke down over $124 on the five minutes. But if we look on the four hourly, you can see it's probably broken down much, much sooner than that. Well, it broke down $133 on the four hourly, still going down just now, broken that structure, as I said. But previous to that, it broke down at $235. So we could have traded at that, still been in the game and made a lot of money just with um, Ethereum Bear. So with regards to Ethereum Bear and Ethereum Bull, there is a possibility of being liquidated. This is margin, it's 3x margin that you're doing here. And same with all the bears and the bulls that, the, um, that um, kind of Binance have got. And I'm going to refer you to this guide, a beginner's guide to leverage tokens. This is on Binance. I'll put a link down below for you as well. Now, with regards to kind of this, you can get liquidated. However, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get liquidated. With this, although you can lose a lot, 
So if you went to put in a buy order in for the bear token, and that means you expect Ethereum to go down, for example, and you buy the bear token, if it moves against you very quickly, you could lose a lot of money, just like anything, and um, to be honest. So just trade wisely, but very unlikely because of the rebalancing that they do with leverage tokens. Um, so if it does move down quickly, they kind of rebalance it quickly as well. Um, so you're not going to lose 100% um, of your money. Um, so it's very unlikely that you're going to lose 100% of your money or get liquidated. But it could happen if there's, a say, a 50% gap uh, in something something happening. This is kind of the, the kind of information to give on this guide as well. So very unlikely. It doesn't mean to say if it moves down 33% because of 3x that you're going to lose 100% of your money. It doesn't mean that. Um, it just rebalances all the time. So you have to remember that as well. But put stop losses in. Hard to put stop losses in though because it's moving so quickly. Um, so for me, it's a case of watching it throughout the day and just being mindful. You can, as I said, trade a 15 minute or you can just do it on the hourly or the four hourly and just kind of walk away and keep coming back and checking it every hour or so. Um, so I'll put a link down below for you for the beginner's guide to leverage tokens. But this is the way I'm kind of making money just now. It's working out well at the minute. Um, so I'm going to keep on doing that as well. I don't know if you've got any questions on that. If you have, let me know. Uh, I'll just go back to the chat. Mike, watching all the way from sunny Saudi on lockdown. Oh, you're in Saudi just now? Wow. Um, Mark, you have, hi Steve. Do you have alerts for these streams as I will be online? Um, if you hit the notification bell, um, subscribe obviously, I would imagine you have. And hit the notification bell and click on it again if you see it. I'll show you here. So if you... Well, it's not going to let me show here. I'll have, have to switch over. But if you have the notification bell, you can either um, subscribe to all the kind of alerts or just get some of them. So if you do that, Mark Yabs, that would be great. Um, Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, Mark Yabs is from. A few more in the room. Good, good. Do you think the likes of ETH Link, etc. will cover from this in the long term? In the long term, I think yes. This is going to be really testing for the crypto markets. It's going to be a really, really testing time. Um, just to see if crypto is going to survive. I think this is the old coin pods that I've been talking about for months. Perfect time to get rid of the shit coins. And that's what's going to happen. A lot of these projects are just going to disappear. Which is a good thing because they're just shit coins. They're just ideas. They're not, there's no product. They've nothing. They've not been working on it. They've taken the money um, and not done anything with it. So that's a good thing. From that point of view, with the likes of Link, with the likes of um, the other ones I'm going to be talking about very very briefly, I'm just going to say what ones I'm going to go into. Um, I think they're going to be around for a long time, but they have to ride this out. So it's a case of whether they have their kind of tenacity to ride it out. And a few of the, the ones I'm going to be talking about certainly have, I believe. Um, so yeah, I do think uh, Ethereum especially, if anything is going to survive, apart from Bitcoin, Ethereum is going to survive. Uh, it's what most things are going to be built on. It's what the DeFi space is going to be built on. It's what the gaming space is going to be built on. Ethereum is going to survive um, after kind of Bitcoin if kind of all this kind of pans out and it plays out well. Um, what price would you enter back into BTC? It's extremely difficult to say, to be honest, Mike, um, because we're not even feeling the effects of the economic and the financial situation just now of what's going on with coronavirus. We're not feeling the effects just now. A couple of weeks, a couple of months, we're going to start feeling the effects when nobody has the money for... Kind of, this would be a luxury. Uh, I know we're doing it for our future uh, and as part of our pension plans as well, but it's still considered a luxury if we're going to be trading this as well. And it could be that if it is the only market that's going to be open, then we could see Bitcoin price going up. So it's just a matter of trading it just now. Once everything settles, and we're back to normal, as normal as we can be. Um, but that's going to take months. It really is going to take months. Then uh, I could say with some confidence, I'm going to enter Bitcoin again. I'm going to enter Ethereum again. Um, yeah, so honestly, I don't have an answer for you. I really don't. Um, can we look at oil and once uh, stop for trading? Still got good buy order, $17 oil. $17, just check that very quickly. It's twenty five dollars. That's not right, is it? CFDs on Brent crude oil. Saying it's twenty five dollars. I thought it was um, down below that. 
oil, US crude oil, $22.72. So, depends on what one you've got. So it looks as if oil is still going down. So if you've got an order on 17, that might, be, it might get filled. It might actually get filled. And um, look at chain link and just look at link. And um, we'll look at USD and so this is on the four hourly. Obviously, you can see the big drop on the 7th of March from $4.65. And crossed back up at one dollar ninety nine, went to two dollars sixty eight, crossed down over the two two dollars twenty, came down again, still one ninety eight at the minute. So you have to think, you have to think about this rationally. You have to really be kind of careful. You know, I'm probably one of the most positive people in the world, and um, just now when it comes to this. But we have to look at the bigger picture. We have to see the bigger picture, and just say, um, is anything worth? what it's kind of trading at just now. It's only worth as much as somebody is willing to pay for it. Now, if you've not got the money to buy it, you're not even going to think about buying altcoins. You're not even going to think about buying Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else. You're going to, this is going to be a case of survival. And I know that sounds extreme, but we've seen it happening with panic buying. And um, we've seen a lot of panic, panic buying in shops because of the coronavirus. Um, and that is, people trying to survive. It's that kind of reptilian brain saying to us, need to survive, need to stock up. This is going to take a couple of months. This is why people panic buy because it's, they're fearful. Um, and I understand that. I get that. I've never done it myself. I've never I've just been going out daily uh, and kind of buying so we can give everybody else a chance. But that's what people are doing just now. With regards to kind of crypto, cryptocurrency, it could be the same kind of thing. And it might take a couple of weeks for people to realize this. Um, but they're going to see kind of cryptocurrency possibly as a luxury. Or it could be that they just start stocking up and just say, okay, this is going to be long term. Uh, I'm going to buy this for the long term. I still think we've got a lot of downside. I've been really honest and I, I hate saying that because I don't want to panic anybody or be an alarmist. But I still think we've got a lot of downside until this kind of blows over. And it just doesn't look as if it's going to blow over uh, in the next week or so. Uh, it just looks as if it's going to get worse. And the economic situation is not even start to kick in just now so just be extremely careful when you're buying trade this is what these markets are for um and trade for kind of obviously for making money uh, as well but if you're not a trader I, I just i don't know i wouldn't be advising to buy i wouldn't be advising to buy anything bitcoin ethereum link the brilliant ones the brilliant projects out there i just wouldn't be advising to buy at the moment and that's not going to go down well at all. I know that. I know that. And I totally understand why. Um, Mike, if the fundamentals have not changed in the big projects, um, why is this period not a good time to buy and hold for the future? It's not about the fundamentals of the projects. Um, it's about a world economic situation, a black swan event that is going to affect every single person in the world financially. Um, and the daily living is just going to be totally different. Um, so that is what we have to think about. That's what we have to think about. So if you think about the likes of, we've got kind of British Telecom over here, or BT is called, and that was trading at £2.10 10, 10 or something last week. I think it's down under £1 or nearly a pound just now. Fundamentals haven't changed. It's a big company, huge company. Fundamentals haven't changed, and yet it's gone down 50%. Same with everything in the stock market. And the stock market is probably the one everybody thinks about, or the, the one everybody kind of thinks about kind of trading as well. Cryptocurrency market is still in its infancy. Uh, to me, is it going to survive? Yes, it's going to survive. But this is not the time to start thinking about um, buying for the long term. I don't think, I genuinely don't think that at the moment. At the moment. Um, but there's still going to be some cryptocurrency projects that are going to win out of this. Think of Binance. Think of the exchanges, think of them because people are going to be on and using them as well. Um, and you're going to get traders like us, think about this point of view as well. You're going to get people who are sitting in the house um, and they're kind of reading the news more and they're going to find out more about cryptocurrency as well. They're going to find out more about Bitcoin trading. Um, so if they're stuck in the house, they're self-isolating, 
you're going to get a lot more people trading on the likes of Binance, um, on the likes of the other exchanges as well, on the likes of KuCoin, uh, Digitex is kind of been mentioned as well when that comes out. You're going to get projects like that that are going to thrive in something this black swan event. So we have to think about that as well. Um, it possibly be Ethereum as well. Um, it could be that dApps are going to th uh, thrive on this as well. And you could get the games that thrive as well because people are staying in more. Amazon's going to thrive. Amazon's going to be one of the big winners, uh, the big um, company winners out of this um, as well. So think about who is going to be, who's going to benefit from what's happening in the world just now, from more thousands, millions, billions of people staying in their homes. Just now, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be going on the internet. They're going to be watching the news. Subscriptions, I would imagine, of Netflix is going to shoot through the roof. Um, and now TV and kind of things like that as well. It's going to absolutely shoot through the roof. So we have to think about cryptocurrency in that point of view as well. What could thrive in this kind of market? You've got to ask yourself that question um, as well. But we have to feel the full kind of downturn of this, the economic downturn as well. I don't think it's going to be at the top of everybody's mind unless you're a trader like us. It's not going to be at the top of everybody's mind to start buying likes of it, Link, Ethereum, Bitcoin, etc. just now. However, the whales could control, start controlling the markets um, kind of much, much more than we've seen just now. Um, who could clap? Hi, Steve. Amazing that Digitech's still holding up against ETH. I've not seen Digitex actually. So on BTC. Oh, this is Satoshi value, obviously. Kind of went down 2,600. It's now 415. Well, it stayed that way since April, so that's nothing to do with it. That was just a big fall. So that stayed stable. That's, right, that's on a weekly. That's what I'm looking at. Sorry. I thought it was on the, still on a four hourly. Yeah, it's, so it's done a bit brilliantly. If you look at Digitex, it's not really falling that much at all. In fact, I don't think at all. So it's doing really well considering what's happening um, just now. So what happened on the 8th of March? 7th of March, nothing much. It kind of came down and went back up again. So that's quite incredible. So yeah, it's holding its own. Hey, Marky Habs, with these low prices, I doubt teams will dump the coins on us. No, no, I don't think teams are going to dump the coins on you. I just think that um, they could... The, the project, I'm talking about the ship projects, are just going to disappear. Um, and people are just going to stop trading them as well. So I don't think there's going to be any dumping of the coins. I don't think the team are going to be doing that. Uh, so I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to um, kind of think about how they, they pay their teams as well. Um, so think about that. Um, I, I'm heading first week in April. We are on the road to recovery. Why? Because of this malaria drug used in combination with Zithromax. Um, no vaccines. Bill Gates upset that no vaccine will be needed. Mark Abs. I'm hearing, sorry, I'm hearing first week of April. We're on the road to recovery. Maybe a drug using um, combination with Zithromax. So I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that at all. I thought the vaccine, I thought that, that really scared the shit out of me as well. If they were going to try and enforce everybody to get a vaccine, I thought that, that would be the next thing. Well, I actually thought the next thing was going to be a run on the banks. Uh, in the UK and the US, we're starting to get that as well. Um, but that was the other thing I wanted to talk about. So I've gone on too long already. Um, but the other thing I kind of wanted to show you, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. There's enough cash in the banking system. You don't need to. Your ATM is safe. Your banks are safe. There's enough cash in the financial system, and there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. Uh, so I don't know if you heard that. Um, I think my camera keeps on going on and off. Christ knows what's going on here. Um, so the Federal Reserve are saying they've got an infinite amount of money. Um, so there's no need to kind of withdraw money from the ATMs um, as well. An infinite amount of money. That, uh, that, that's really scary stuff um, as well, which is why Bitcoin is going to be infinitely better and could be... Um, the world currency possibly sooner than we thought because of this. This could escalate it or could it um, expedite that kind of happening. However, it's not going to be in the immediate 
um, in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months. That's what I'm saying to think about. I'm, me personally, I think cryptocurrency is going to survive. It totally is going to survive and thrive as well, big time. Um, Yogesh, for me, I would say this is the only market active, so I'll be trading this all day. Yeah, I think it's going to be good for trading. Got nothing else to do in this lockdown. Um, Doru, what about gold and silver? Um, gold and silver, yeah, I think the traditional market um, and institutional investors will be turning to gold. Just have a look at the gold price. Where are we? Obviously, the gold spot is down as, as well just now. Um, $1,492. We were up to $1,700. Crossed over on the MACD as well. So we could be going up for gold. But traditionally, that's where they've gone into um, gold. But um, it's not looking like it at the moment. So gold is even going down as well. And silver, I've not got the silver market up there. Would that be AG? I don't know. Where's silver again? Silver US Oz, I don't know the I don't know if that's right or not, if that's the right market or not. Twelve dollars fifty eight, does that sound right? I haven't looked at the silver market actually. I guess not good for sharing, travel being key and all. Yes, I think um, that's one of the six I was going to be looking at. So that gives me a good chance to kind of talk about the six I'm looking to buy back when everything, when the dust settles. So the first one is Ethereum. For obvious reasons, uh, Ethereum is still going to be the main kind of platform blockchain that everybody uses um, for dApps, for gaming, for DeFi, uh, etc. I think that is kind of obvious for me. Um, uh, ETH 2.0 is still not um, come out, so once that kind of fully um, comes out, I think Ethereum is going to be the big main altcoin that a lot of people are going to be buying, certainly me. Taylor, for me, is um, absolutely crucial for that as well. Um, on the Ethereum kind of blockchain as well, it's going to be enable smart contracts to can we communicate with the outside world and give live prices, um, etc. Just, uh, I think Taylor could be brilliant for that. Link is kind of doing that. Um, just now is what Taylor is doing, something similar. But I think because of the low market cap that um, Taylor has got, I think there's more of a chance to make more money there and get involved in a kind of project from the start. Well, it's not from the start, it's been going on for a while, but I think Taylor um, could be a big one um, as well. So it's an easy to implement solution to get high value data into your smart contracts. And um, that's Taylor Coty. I think is a payment solution for the cryptocurrency market and the cryptocurrency space. I think that could be huge. That was doing brilliantly before all this happened as well. It was doing it amazingly well for us. Still think it's highly undervalued, a 3.8 million market cap and um, 211 BTC. So, so Satoshi values held up pretty well actually um, for Coty. And uh, it says the ultimate power grid of payments. And I still think when crypto survives, it's going to be big. Constellation, um, kind of using big data, still going to need that probably more so than ever. Um, Constellation or DAG, as you might know it, 6.7 million market cap, 114 um, BTC at the moment, Satoshi at the moment, um, which has held up quite well as well. Um, so dollar value obviously not held up as much. So what I'm looking at um, is collecting as much USDT as possible and buying these back. I've sold out of everything. I've kind of been open and honest with that. Sold out of everything and just trading at the minute USDT. I'm going to get enough, I can buy this back. So consolation for me, I want to get 260,000. Um, buy that back. That's what I had before. Uh, and see what happens there as well. Um, and this is for big data. And because of the government um, the government contracts that are in um, kind of decode, they're involved in that space as well. And the contacts I've got, I just think this could be really big as well. As I said, I'm not buying everything at the moment. Share token, I still really love um, share token just now, but and the only travel app you'll ever need, but with the travel kind of restrictions going on at the minute, when everything settles down, this could go down further and it could be an absolute steal um, for this. Remember, they've got everything in place now. Everything has been done, the groundwork's been done, everything has been put in place. They've got the money um, just now as well. So this could be an absolute steal um, at the minute. So it's 22 Satoshi, just now it has dropped. Still 22 just now, 1.4 million market cap. So I'm looking to buy that back as well. 
Chromia, I'm looking to buy back as well. 2 million market cap for that, 216. Um, Satoshi, um, relational blockchain platform. And I've done kind of 10 minute spotlights on all of these. That's why I'm kind of showing it to you just now as well. So these are the ones I'm looking to kind of buy back as well, as well as a couple of others. We've got Ocean uh, as well, could be a really good one um, to buy. I didn't do a 10 minute spotlight on that, but I like Ocean as well. So that's the kind of six I'll be looking at buying back, especially Ethereum, obviously, and then look at the others um, as well. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then it'll be down to these six um, altcoins as well, or the small caps I'll be looking at. Uh, VeChain would be a good one as well. Somebody's just mentioned that just now. VeChain will survive, no doubt, backed by DNVGL. Supply chain authentication will be a winner for, for this crisis, especially drugs. Yes, exactly. So that's what you've got to think about. Who is in this, and it's not a dystopian world we're living in just now. It just seems that way sometimes with the way things are going. Um, but who, what project could survive if the worst came to the worst and things did get really, really bad and we got into martial law and stuff like that as well. What projects could survive on the blockchain? VeChain um, could be one um, for that kind of supply chain as well for logging that supply chain. Uh, Mike, thanks, Steve. Um, great show. Hopefully I'll be back home in the UK by Christmas. Hello. Excellent. Um, are you, I take it wasn't a holiday there. I take it you're not stuck there on holiday or something. I hope not, Mike. Uh, Gina Dow, as I mentioned last week, market crash like this um, till it hits rock bottom could make you millionaires best time to buy stocks and cryptos yes so the panic is on just now everybody's panicking just now very very true um, how long is that panic going to last though how long is that panic going to last once the panic kind of settles everybody gets back to normal or tries to get back to normal then that's when things are going to look really interesting to start buying um, as well Ken1969 is in, and welcome to you. ETH1 is in as well, good to see you here. Uh, I bought a little BTG and BTD just for the fun of it. I think they will go up in BTC. Will, uh, what are your thoughts, Steve? They probably will go up. I think um, BCH and BSV have got the mainnets, they've got um, what's coming out. Sorry, they've got the halving, not the mainnets. They've got the halvings coming out uh, as well very soon. Obviously, Bitcoin has as well. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Bitcoin halving as well. So, yeah, a lot of these um, could go up as well. But if you're looking to trade this market, I'm not going to do the news because it went on long, um, longer than I thought. If you're looking to trade this market, focus on one pro uh, focus on one project um, just now, whether that be Bitcoin, whether it be XRP, whether it be um, kind of Ethereum or Ethereum Bear, Ethereum Bull, or just I would focus on one. Because what happens when you focus on one particular um, kind of asset that you're trading, you get to know the kind of little nuances. You get to get a feel for it. You develop an intuitive feeling when you're trading just the one. Instead of trading lots of other ones, um, you start to develop a kind of an intuitive feeling um, as well. So I would focus on one uh, and just trade that. If you're going to trade it, day trade it or whatever. And you can absolutely day trade and still make a couple hundred dollars, a hundred dollars a day, fifty dollars a day, uh, might even be brilliant as well. Um, doing that, then I would definitely do that. I would just focus on the one though. Um, I'm just going to see. And look at this just now. And um, we'll just go Ethereum. Ethereum's coming back up. One two two point five nine. Uh, I'm just going to go fifteen minutes. 15 minutes on the charts. Yeah, you could absolutely do that. And it's coming back up just now. It's not crossed over yet, but it's coming back up just now. So it crossed down over 124. You could have sold 124 and made $4 on that. So it depends on how many you're buying. Uh, if you're making $50 a day trading, uh, if you just kind of aim for that, $50 a day is really quite good for, it will be a, a good for a lot of people. Um, and it's not bad kind of little income and you can just do it on the crossovers although with the crossovers is um, obviously lagging as well because it, you might not get until 123 dollars and then sell or kind of you'd have to kind of sell at the peak or buy back at the peak so i'm not saying it's easy i'm just saying you can make it easier 
for you as well. But I would focus on one asset class uh, and just do it that way and just get to know it really, really well. And my camera has just <laughs> kind of disappeared altogether now. So you can probably still hear me just now. So I'm going to leave it there just now because my camera has totally died. In fact, I'm going to see if I can go on to screen capture. I'm going to get add another one. And we'll do video capture and we'll do Logitech. So I'm back. Again, I'm going to Logitech just now. So I'm back again. So I just switched over to the other camera. Loads of shit going on today. Um, it's just not working. Um, but and that's how I would do, do the markets just now. I would really focus on just one asset and get to know it really, really well. If you're day trading, you're trading on a 50 minute chart. If you've got all day to kind of set the computer, you get to know, believe it or not, you get to know the little kind of nuances and little kind of ticks up and down. You get, a, you start to develop a feel for it. Um, I can literally sit all day with my feet. I could, uh, and I have done it for, for hours at a time, just sat with my feet up, reading a book, just watching almost like the ticker. It kind of reminds me of reminiscence of a stock market um, trader. Um, that kind of book, but could it's just like watching a movie almost, and you could just sit and watch the kind of um, the ups and downs of the market as well. And it doesn't doesn't bore me. I don't get bored with it either when I'm kind of in this mode as well. So you get to know um, when it's going to push up, and you get to see the volume kind of spiking and what you just develop a kind of an intuitive feel. But you could do that. That's why I would advise just focus on one. Uh, just dive over. Let's now see if there's any more comments. Um, Gina Dow saying keep talking. Well, hopefully we've got we're back on again. Hopefully, are we? And just I'm not getting these adverts on YouTube. Anyways, and um, for ETH bull bear, are you putting in seal prices? Are you putting in seal prices? What's a seal price? Um. Do you mean stop losses? Are you putting in stop losses? And um, because if you mean stop losses, I'm I can think that's what, that's um, what you mean, uh, Marky. Um, if you if for stop losses, you can put in stop losses, but if you're day trading it, then you're just going to get in and out of, out of the market really, really quick. So for me, I don't use the stop losses uh, in that instance. If I'm going out for a couple of hours or something, um, which is not the case just now. Um, are oh, you putting in sell prices? Right, I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> right, you're putting in sell prices. Um, not necessarily because you don't know where it's going to end up. Um, what you can do is you can put in stop losses and move it higher. So if you kind of buy Ethereum beer or something like that and you buy it, say, $20, for example, and it moves up $5, it goes up to $25, you can move a stop loss up say, and keep it $2 behind for you bought it at. Um, so you could put your stop loss in that way and do a trailing stop loss. You could do that. Um, I'm not doing it. I'm just kind of watching the markets because I'm able to sit at my computer um, all day because I'm writing um, just now so I can switch back and forth and really keep an eye on it. Um, so that's my thing just now. I'm just writing. I'm still finishing uh, my book as well. By the way, if you want to buy the book and support this channel, there's a link down below to buy The Belief Principle. Um, you can buy that and support the channel as well. Um, or you can join the premium group. But, um, yeah, I'm not putting in stop losses. I'm not putting in sell prices. I've not got, um, for targets, I've not got it as well. What I was looking at, um, I was looking at 30% for each trade. That's going to be really difficult unless you're trading on a four hourly or something like that. So it wouldn't kind of necessarily be strictly day trading because you're not in and out all day. Um, but um, you could do that as well. But I'm just looking, I'm just um getting a feel for it the time that i was i was stuck in a trade uh, i didn't put the stop loss in um, i lost probably about five thousand dollars which was crazy it was stupid um because i was up to about eleven thousand dollars and i came all the way back down to the start again so i'm really kind of started and that was the time i thought uh, it's going okay just now i'm just going to kind of go out of the house and i was out longer than i thought it was i was literally going to be out an hour or something and it took about four four and a half hours or something to do what I was going to do 
and it was just crazy. I should have put the stop loss in before I left, but I thought it was only going to be an hour. But so you can lose a lot of money as well. You have to be really careful. So, but I'm not. I've not lost anything. I'm back to where I started. But I'm confident that um, with this trading, it's going to come back quite relatively within a short space of time. And um, do you think we have reached the bottom yet, or do you think the market will dive even more? I th King, I think we've still got more to come. I, th I, th I really do think we've got more to come. Once the economic situation of what's going on around the world really kicks in, um, we've got more to come, I believe. Mark, we'll probably dive more as UK and US get serious corona spread. Yep, it's still relatively small spread at the moment. Yeah, if it gets anything like Italy, and obviously this is the measures they're trying to put in place just now, is that obviously trying to stop that as well. But if it gets more like Italy, and yes, I realised I'm still on my face. Yeah, Mark priced at 2.30 p.m. UK time as um, US stock market opens. Yeah, the US stock market were down 538 just now. I suspect we're going to get another kind of thousand point drop in the Wall Street markets. Um, we're down 157 just now, but... I do suspect the FTSE 100 could go down to 4,000 um, over the next kind of week or so. I need to wait and see what happens there. Okay, I think that is it for the moment. Just see, 13 people watching just now. I think I've been on for an hour. I think that's um, kind of long enough. I could stay all, um, here all day and just kind of talk. Um, with trading, why is the flash crashes in the trading platform rigged? Um, flash crashes because because there's been a, a big. This is something I never got in kind of Bitmex as well, um, and the kind of explanation of it. Obviously, there's a big seller on that particular platform, and they sell it, and it's a, there's a particular flash crash um, there as well. There's a big huge sell off, so somebody kind of buys all the way down, um, but. I don't fully understand it, if I'm being honest, because I just don't get how they don't have systems in place to prevent flash crashes like have happened in the past. But it is the whales that kind of do it, and they just kind of sell all the way to the bottom. And they're still making money if they've, if you think about it. Um, so that's why you get flash crashes as well. Um, Mark, yeah, Mark has got the wee whale symbol as well. That's a, so it is the whales that kind of control it, and that's how you know there's a lot of whales in the, the market as well. And I'm just going to see... What's happening at the minute? Just have a look around again. Ethereum has gone up again. So 122.65. It did get down to 120. Uh, we're still crossed down over on the 70 um, A and the 21 EMA. Still crossed down over that. What is ETH Bear at the moment? ETH Bull. So $19.38 for ETH Bear. So it's come down this 15 minutes. We've got three red candles there. But we're still hitting the 7th EMA. So we'd still be in that at the minute. And ETH Bull, obviously that would be the opposite. We've got the crossover down there. We've had three green candles. So exactly the opposite with ETH Bear. But you can see the prices are different $65. Um, for ETH Bull and $18, $19 for ETH Bear. As I said, that kind of rebalances out. So you're probably you're never going to be liquidated if you're kind of day trading. Now, when you hold it overnight, that's the difference. You don't want to hold ETH Bear um, kind of overnight because it could go against you big time. But it's the same with any token. Any idea on how low ETH could go? My thinking was um, it could could go to kind of sixty dollars um, and that was my thinking for the sixty dollars but again this could turn around we do we know what the crypto market is like and how quickly it can turn around this could turn around and everybody goes okay this is they just capitulate uh, kind of the reverse point of view when capitulation we normally think about and um, capitulation and talking about it that people just let go and they just sell that's when we hear about capitulation but it could be that we get capitulation in reverse and just say okay that's low enough we're just going to start buying big time here so it could be that we get capitulation and just say, okay, this is way too low. I still don't think it is the case for Ethereum just now, $120-ish. I still think we've got low, low to go for Ethereum. But the crypto market, you just know what it's like. It could turn on a whim. I just don't see how. I just don't, I, I literally, physically cannot see how it's possible. Thinking about it from a psychological point of view and a mass 
psychology point of view that everybody's going to say, ah, oh, wow, it's time to start buying uh, kind of Ethereum just now. It's so low just now. Think about it. Who's in the crypto space just now? It's only us. It's only us kind of retail investors and the kind of diehards out there. The people that were kind of on the, the outside, they knew about cryptocurrency and they bought some cryptocurrency. They're out of the game just now. They're out of the game just saying, oh, this is too risky. Things are happening in the world. I just don't need to kind of even think about cryptocurrency. I'm just going to get out. There's going to be other people coming in on the other side, though, um, just saying, OK, now is the time to start buying cryptocurrency. I've heard a lot about it. I didn't do anything about it. Now I'm going to start buying. My son phoned me up the other day and was speaking about XRP. So he's bought some XRP. Um, I, kind of not against my advice, but he just said, OK, I've heard about XRP. He's never been in crypt, into crypt, cryptocurrency. So you're going to get a lot of people like that. So you're going to get a lot of people out, some people in as well. The Google searches for Bitcoin has gone up um, as well. So you just don't know, but I still feel there's um, more um, to go to the downside for kind of all cryptos just now. Um, they should put a system in to protect other traders. They should, um, do you know, and this is why we need regulation. If we think about it, this is why we need the regulation to put a system in place in order to protect this kind of thing happening when you get those kind of big dips. Because um, you're not going to get liquidated on Binance unless you're on doing margin trading, but you're going to get stopped out. If you put a stop loss in place, you're going to get stopped out. But that is the reason why you put stop losses in place. So you do get stopped out, so you're not losing all your money. And usually with a flash crash, it kind of comes back up straight away. Um, we don't get a lot of flash crashes where they stay at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just now. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I know we don't have uh, as many people on as normal, but I really appreciate your time today. And if, you, if you're watching this back, if you've got any questions, let me know in the kind of comments down below. If you want to support this channel, buy the book. Just now I'm, I'm writing a book. It's nearly finished. It comes out the end of April. But I have, I have finished it. I'm just doing the second edit uh, of it. I'm still doing the second edit um, of it. And it will be finished for the end of April, obviously. Um, but thanks again. Really appreciate your time. And I'll see you next time. Until then. Namaste. Take care. Bye now.